So first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, I've got four stakes here, I'm gonna tie some string to them. I'm gonna move it this way a little bit and see where the edges of the greenhouse are gonna be, where the base of it's gonna lay, so I can kind of flatten it out and make sure it's just not too lopsided. Definitely doesn't have to be perfect the way I'm gonna do it, so. Uh, just to make it roughly flat and get out any big bumps so it's gonna be easier to work with. Uh, so I put out my strings in roughly where the where the little greenhouse is gonna go. Okay, so I just need to level out where the frame of the box is gonna go, uh, build it and lay it here. I'm <laughs> testing out just the front piece, dug those two sides. Those are the ones that need the most digging. So I'm just gonna test this out and then I'll do the same when I attach the walls on the other side and figure out how much I need to dig out of there. dead center on that now so this is a bit lower than I was hoping but that's fine this is all SPF regular SPF I know it's gonna rot in a few years but uh, I don't want to put any chemical treated stuff in here for growing plants the chickens are gonna be in here all the time Okay, so I'm gonna lay out the wood like this. The walls are gonna be two two by 10 stacked on top of each other. Total length is gonna be 20 foot. It's gotta be a multiple of five because the cattle panel, or multiple of four, because the cattle panels I'm gonna to use to go over the top are four feet, uh, four feet wide. So I just cut some two by three that I'm gonna join them together with and little bits of plywood I'm gonna use where the boards, where the two by 10s meet each other. I got an eight foot two by 10 and a 12 foot two by 10 and I'm kind of staggering them. So I have an eight and a 12 on this side and then a 12 and an eight up on that side. So instead of trying to butt them all together, I think it'll be a little more solid. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, I was got the two sidewalls finished. I was, had to stay till after dark. I don't know if the time lapse came out or not, but. So I'm gonna attach the a two by six by 10 across the bottom of the front of the wall from the back of the walls. The next step then will be the cattle panels, then building the walls on either side, either side then plastic it in and it's finished then so so uh sitting here with the cattle panels that we're going to be using to put over top of our greenhouse pretty thick gauge and they're 16 feet long the only downside is they're they're pretty expensive and you know as far as i'm concerned they're close in canada they're close to 100 bucks each once the taxes are in there actually they're yeah almost exactly 100 dollars um but they transport nice and easy. You can bend them like this, and that's why they're going to be going over the top of the greenhouse. Now they'll be more spread out, uh, but they'll have a 20-inch lift off the ground with the 2x10s that we had there. It's really too bad we couldn't find the 2x12s because uh, that would have been uh, an extra, you know, four inches off the ground, or pretty much four inches off the ground. So that would have given me a little more headroom. I'm a touch over six foot tall, so. Uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be cramped, but we'll see what it looks like when I get it all done. But from what I've seen from other people who've made this, I think it'll be good for us. And it's going to be chicken paradise, hopefully. Here's the, uh, the wall where we're going to attach the cattle panels. And uh, I'm going to use fencing staples to do that. Um, so the awkward thing is going to be getting the cattle panel to stay in place while I'm nailing it on and keeping it straight so I was thinking about it and I think I'm just gonna mark say maybe two inch and a half down I'm gonna mark and put in some screws to hold the cattle panels in place and then uh, 
I'll just be able to lay it on this side, bend it, lay it on the other side. Hopefully it's not jumping out on me. And uh, that should keep it nice and straight and level and everything too. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So uh, I'll grab a cattle handle and we'll do an experiment, see if it works. If it works, I'll carry on doing it. If it doesn't work, I'll have to wait for Jenny to get home to help me. So I was worried about it being too short, but I think this is going to be a lovely height. I think it's just right. I'll still be able to get into the sides pretty easy. Yep, I think that'll do nicely. Wow, that went easier than I thought. Hopefully the rest of it goes that nicely. I left it out an inch over on the end here. I think that's the right thing to do, because we need to wrap around the corner there. Not hard to get on and off if I did it messed up. Thanks, sweetheart. But I think an inch over is good. If I stayed in bar tight, right to the end of the wood here, then once I put the, I'm gonna put some foam on this edge, I'm afraid it's gonna wrap over too far. We'll leave it like that until I think of a reason why it shouldn't be. And then I'll, uh, I'll, you'll, I'll just do a time lapse of me taking it all back down and putting it all back up. So I'll zip tie these together where, the, uh, where they meet. But that system of putting in the screws makes it easy to shove these on by yourself. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's a bit wobbly when I'm pounding it in because on this side it's not touching the ground hardly at all. And I noticed that the two by six were starting, the screws were starting to rip out a bit. So I went and got some four inch screws, a little bigger to tack them in. So now they have six screws in each corner to hold on the two by six and hopefully keep this upright. It's top heavy, right? Because the two by six is right on the ground. And then uh, I guess presumably these are supposed to hold it together, but once I build the door frames on either side, it'll be attached to the walls, it'll be attached to the base. So it should be way more solid then hopefully. So let's get some zip ties and attach up these panels as we go. Maybe on every one is overkill, but I don't really care. About 200 zip ties, so I'll worry if I run out. I feel like this stability in this direction is going to be important. We do get a lot of snow here and uh, from, I, I've watched a lot of videos about this and read different builds and stuff and I'm kind of mixing up a few different ones but peop, some people say you definitely need to have support structures in place uh, for the snow and we do get a lot of snow and other people say it'll be fine so what I'm, I'm not going to put it in at first uh, and I'm going to see how it goes. Um, I'm going to, like I think I mentioned earlier, I'm going to put big black barrels full of water in here to hopefully keep some heat. And there's going to be constantly a, con a compost pile in here. Hopefully that's pretty warm. Uh, that's going to be giving off heat all winter as well. So we'll hope for the best. If it starts to sag in a heavy snow, you know, it's as easy as coming out and putting up some, some wood just to hold up the roof a bit better. So. Putting on the panels, what I should have done is had wire or something to uh, connect both sides together as we go, and obviously this doesn't help. Can you come down out of there, baby? Thanks. But you can see here, probably, that the walls are bowed out because of the pressure from those uh, cattle panels. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal, because when I build the end walls now, maybe today, I'll be able to suck those back in. But I'm thinking if I get a ratchet strap or two, I can suck in the sides a bit and just take some of the pressure off of it. We're gonna grind off the excess cattle panel that came over. So there's one problem that I'm seeing so far. Other problem is the boat out walls. So I put in four hardware staples on each one. And after I shore it up now and get it more solid and put on the end walls, I'll probably just go through and put one in every square. Because why not? There's, if when the wind blows, there's gonna be a lot of uh, there's going to be a lot of force getting put on those, so I don't think four will be a problem. But I got lots of hardware staples, so they're not that expensive. So I'll use those up. I wonder why the it's bowing out so much, Genie. I got kids climbing all over it. This would be a perfect jungle gym for you and Martin, wouldn't it? I've got this two by six across the front, which should be ten feet, which it is. But if I measured from across the top, especially in the middle, 
you can see that 10 foot we're about almost six inches bowed out on the sides so i think a couple of ratchet straps between the panels there is going to suck it back in for me and then uh, building the end walls will suck it in a bit more and then that'll hold it in place so that took the, the strain off of the uh strain off of it you can see it's bowed in the middle a little bit there now so you can see now it's uh, bowed in very slightly in the center which is great that's fine by me but it's just about 10 feet uh, on the top of the walls here now so <clears throat> that's where we want it probably even a little bit more but like I said once I get uh, the end wall built now that'll shore that up and make it nice and solid Okay, so today we're going to start on the end walls here. My plan is to uh, to make the uh, doorway wide enough for a wheelbarrow to get into and for the uh, 2x3 to line up right underneath the wire on the cattle panel at the same place on both sides. So it's going to be mostly perfectly centered. It might not be perfect, perfect centered, but I'd rather it line up with the wire than it be perfectly centered. I brought the wheelbarrow down and tested it out at this width against these two wires. Uh, the wheelbarrow still gets in there. It's only a two by six here and it's gonna be half under the ground anyway. So it'll be easy to pop the wheelbarrow in and out there. Uh, from here, to try to make the sides more stable, because the cattle panel did push them out a nice bit, I'm going to run a, uh, run a support diagonally from here down to the bottom of this, bottom of the door. And uh, we'll see what other, how much other support I'll need. And I'll put one, of course, horizontally across as well. So first thing I'm going to do here now in a second is uh, just measure those from the center, make sure they're kind of within reason, close to being the same distance away from the center once they're level. And uh, then we're going to mark off where I'm going to have to cut them. And then we're going to put them on and nail them there. All right, so I measured uh, where these would be level uh, from the same wire. I don't know how well you can see that. However, uh, when I measured their distance from the center, one was 13 inches, one was 17 inches. And now that I measure that, I can kind of see when I'm looking here, the, uh, it is bowed a little bit to the left. So, meaning the cattle panels are leaning to the left a little bit there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push those across and uh, until it's pretty centered, then I'll take another measurement, then I'll attach them so that the uh, two by fours are holding the cattle panels in place. So I don't have a plumb bob, so we're gonna tie this giant screw to a piece of string and hang it from the center there. So a cattle panel is 24, it's 24 panels wide, or 24 squares wide. Mm -hmm. So in between the two 12s is where I'll tie this off. And it's not gonna be perfect because it's not gonna be, it's gonna be on an angle. I'm just gonna have to judge my best from the string and not from the bob itself, but it'll be approximate enough. All right, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is the center line. I think I cut my string long enough. As you can see, probably, that little pencil mark there is the middle, and their plumb bob or whatever is blowing in the wind now, but it's substantially to the right of that, so. We're gonna have to push the panels to the left until they're lined up. That's funny, I gotta push it to the left. It looks like, to me, it's slanting to the left already. We'll trust gravity and not my eyeball. So I'm gonna just uh, push it across with a two by four until it looks like it's in a good spot and then try and jam it in to the ground. We got it pretty much centered up here, I think, within uh, half an inch or so from the center. So I reckon that's probably good enough. So I just marked off where I need to cut it so that it, when it's level, it's sitting right under that wire. So uh, I'm gonna slice the tops off of those. And uh, on the bottom, I'm gonna put in three uh, four inch screws. And hopefully that's good enough to keep them nice and rigid. So uh, we got the two uprights there. Once I push them over, they'll be leveled up and once I attach them to the sides there, 
That should be all squared up then. I'll make sure it's all square then before I keep going. Three screws in the bottom. A uh, wood staple on the top. And there shouldn't be any wood sticking up for the plastic to rub on. So I'm just gonna make a support. I'm gonna, I have this offset, the door's offset inside and I've put the two by six to the outside of the walls so that I can drill my support straight across on top of both, um, on top of both of those. Buddy, can you take two hands and push on that wall as hard as you can? So I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other wall. I'm going to measure center. I'm going to come out to the wires that I need to come to, the, the lengthways um, bars on the cattle panel. And I'm going to attach the wood there and uh, make the 32 inch wide door. So I measured my wheelbarrows like 28 inches, so 32 inch wide door. I want the smallest door that I know I'll be able to get the wheelbarrow through basically. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to frame her out here just like I did on the other side. All right, you can see that the cattle panel goes a little further than the 20 feet, three inches. And I tried to space it out so it worked out uh, that I'd be grinding it off uh, and the cattle panel would reach right to the end of the uh, wood. And it's pretty great, I think. So you can see there, hopefully. So you can see here that I'm less than a thumb width away from the edge of the board here. So that's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna grind it off uh, along this wire. Uh, I'm gonna have foam to put over the edge to help the plastic not rip. So that's gonna be the first, the next job I need to do. I got my two end walls built. I'm not gonna build the doors until I have the plastic inside or the plastic over the top and wrapped around the doors and stuff. And then I'll build my door inside the frame and then take it off and wrap that in plastic and put it back on. Okay, so for the strapping to keep the plastic down, I got some 1x2 strapping. I'm just going to use the 2.5 inch screws. I'm hoping they don't split the wood. If they do and I need to pre drill it, that's going to be a bit of a pain. But if that's what I got to do, it's what I got to do. So I've been thinking about the best way to do this because I really don't know how. And I'm just going to drape the plastic over just right over top of the, uh, the hoop house here. And then I'm going to, uh, I'll take you, I'll take you off here, take you for a walk. On the sides, well, the first thing I'm going to have to do is uh, trim off the 2x3 where it sticks up. You can see it's being bowed in a little bit with the uh, straps I have on there. Um, I'm going to see how bad it comes back out when I let go of the straps. But if it's not too crazy, I'll leave it as is. If it bows out real bad, then I'll uh, drive in some stakes to hold it up. But anyway, I'm going to take the chainsaw and trim these off. And uh, do the same thing on the other side. And on the sides, I'm going to put a strap all the way along the top here. Then, on the sides, I don't think I'm going to put any plastic. I can definitely see why people, if you remember earlier in the video, I said I don't know if I should put these in or out. I think that's why people put them in, I guess, is because uh, it's easier to strap the plastic on on the inside. But it's you end up with real janky looking uh, cattle panel then, so 
We'll see how this works out. Either I'm going to just strap it along the top and then put another strap on the bottom, or I'll strap it along the top and I don't see, I can't see that letting in a lot of, a lot of cold in the summertime or leaking out a lot of uh, heat in the summer when we need the heat. There's a little bit of space on the bottom, but that's obviously, that's going to be filled up with wood chips and compost and all that stuff. So that's, that's my plan for the side here. So the plastic's going to come over the top here, go around the foam I'm going to put on there, and then I'll strap it around the door frame. And I'll strap it along the bottom, uh, and probably wrap inside the door frame. I'll probably strap it twice, once on the outside of the door frame and once on the inside of the door frame. Or maybe once, I might get away with once. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be on the ends, I've never seen anyone get it perfect. There's going to be a little bit of bunching because you're, you know, you're folding in the plastic over the top and around the side. It's going to be a little bit bunchy on the ends because there's nowhere to like affix it around the edge, right? You just got to wrap it around. All right, so we're going to put the foam on the edge here, and I think I mentioned it already, but that's to keep the plastic from ripping because if you just put it right over this, especially on the side where I had to grind off, cut off the uh, excess panel, <clears throat> then uh, that would really tear up the plastic pretty fast. And being such a sharp turn, uh, you know, the plastic is going to rub on that pretty good. So all I did was buy some of this uh, foam insulation for pipes. You can get it in the plumbing section and we're just going to run that around. So when you're doing this, just make sure you get the, uh, the sharp part of the zip tie kind of pointing towards the center of the greenhouse, basically pointing where it's not going to get any plastic rubbing on it. Alright, so I got the, uh, the foam is on here on the edges, I got my strapping laid out for the sides. I'm going to try to heave over the plastic and uh, try to get it equaled out as much as I can. It's a 10 by 20 uh, footprint for the hoop house and I bought a 25 by 40, I think it was 25 by 40 uh, piece of plastic so that we'd have lots of extra, you know, because it's got to go over the top, it's got to wrap in around and then I need to have enough left over to do the doors as well so hopefully my estimations were pretty good and uh, we're going to have enough to get that done, no problem. I don't know if you can tell on video that the wind picked up the second I started to do this. Okay, I think that's going to be plenty big. There's lots left over. All kinds left over. So, uh, yeah, I think that's going to work. So I'm going to try to figure out the best way now to uh, strap all this down and keep it, keep it as tight as I can. Over here you're probably going to be able to see like, how it's going to bunch. So you're going to get the folds like that in it. When uh, when it's pulled tight, but uh, my strategy here is to just, actually I'll probably start on the other side. Let's go over there. Because I can see where the edge is over here. And I'm going to square that up as, as good as I can eyeball it. And uh, get it on that edge. Get it right on that edge. I'm going to leave enough plastic on right now to be a skirt. To the bottom in case I decide I want to uh, attach it at the bottom as well but uh, I'm gonna just yeah I'll pull this side back a little bit because it's a lot closer over there and I'm gonna strap it onto the side and see how that looks 
that then I can get to the other side and pull real tight on her and uh, attach it over there. Then that'll just be the end pieces that are loose and I can take my time and pull it inside the door there, strap it on. Sounds easy in my head. Let's see how she goes. So the other side went easy peasy, no splits in the strapping or anything, which is great. So uh, for this one, I just got to try to bunch up the plastic down below and get a nice tight, uh, get a nice tight sheet going across the top of the greenhouse there. We got the strapping on here. The uh, I think it's reasonably reasonably tight over the top. So now, as I've said on this channel many times, I have no idea what I'm doing. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut off the plastic, kind of trying to make it straight as I can, and I'll uh, just leave enough to make sure I can wrap wrap inside the door frame and everything really nice strap along the bottom and then that should definitely leave me with enough on the end for uh, for the doors after this side is already maybe I'll start on this side it looks like it's already about the right length to uh, wrap it in there really nice and then I'm gonna have to decide what am I gonna do with the skirt am I gonna try to put it right to the ground Got a couple ideas. I'll run up by the boss when she gets home and see what's what's going on. I think right now I'll go have a cup of tea though. I'm going to use a little bit of this extra leftover uh, uh, pipe insulation on the corner here, just where I have my braces put in. It's not sharp sharp, but I think eventually it may fray, so I'm going to just try that out and see if it helps. Just trying to think what's the best way to go about this. Should I cut the center where the door is? wrap it inside and strap it inside and then straighten out out here that's what I feel like might be the best thing or should I get it tight on this part and then tighten up there and then tighten down here hard to know what to do we'll go for it we're gonna cut it Here's the plan. I'm going to strap it on the bottom. I'm going to get it tight on the bottom as much as I can and strap it in. Then I'm going to suck it in around the side and strap it on the back. See how that goes. Okay, so on the inside where these are coming in around the door, I'm going to put some more of that little bit of pipe insulation just to try to eliminate any places where that could rub. Depending on how it looks from outside, I may have to put some more strapping out there, but the plan right now is to wrap the plastic around this upright as good as I can and uh, tack it on there. So I should probably cut my strapping first. All right, I don't know how much uh, the camera died there, so I don't know how much we missed, but uh, I decided to come inside first and put the strapping on there. A lot of extra plastic here, which is good. 
So I'm going to put in that upright piece. As you can see from the inside, it's tightish. It's pretty tight, like there's a good bit of tension on it, but it's wrinkly, right? So I'm going to bunch up as much as I possibly can and uh, try and tack it on here with a piece of strapping. Well, uh, we got it wrapped in there. It's really tight down here, a little bit loose up here, and I remember I mentioned earlier that it's gonna crinkle. Uh, I'm wondering if I took off the strapping on the inside, just the top two screws, and give a real good pull on this now that this is a bit tighter, would that help? So I'm gonna give that a try. Uh, but overall, I think it'll be fine anyway. Like on the, this part feels way tighter now, so I think once I get all four corners pulled in like this, the top is gonna be real nice and tight, so happy, happy how it's going so far. Let's see if these wrinkles can come up. Oh, so the wrinkles didn't go. Didn't think they would, but it's tight or not. I think it's sufficiently tight that blowing is not gonna be a problem. Maybe, hopefully. Uh, so she's uh, strapped in around the door frame there. Uh, oh, I forgot the top of the door. I'll have to put a piece on the top of the door. And uh, trim on the inside. It's wrinkly, as I said, but uh, I think it's tight enough. I hope so. And uh, it's kind of, uh, if you'll look here, kind of uh, getting condensation and stuff inside. So uh, I need to be careful. Oh, I don't have this side open yet. I need to be careful with the chickens when I get them in here, make sure I keep good ventilation happening so they don't get pneumonia and stuff, but uh, or whatever they get. I underestimated the amount of strapping I'd need, so I'm gonna have to pick up another bundle or Probably just one more bundle. All right, so we got delayed a few days, but I'm gonna get back at it today. Hopefully I can get it finished. At least get this end done, and hopefully get the doors in. That's the hope, but I don't know if the weather's gonna cooperate again today. So uh, I've been thinking about how I wrapped the last side. I think there's a better way that I'm gonna attempt to do here. Uh, last side, I didn't cut any off. I tried to pull it down as far as I could, screw it on with strapping and then pull it all in through the door. Um, but I think what I should have done is pulled it down and strapped it. Pulled it down and cut off most of it and leave enough that there's a little bit extra to trim off later. Um, you know, make sure you, I don't cut it too far uh, and then strap it on the bottom and then pull it in the door. I think on that side I got way too much plastic left over. So I'm gonna attempt that on this side. If it works out really good, I'll go back and I'll redo the other side. So it's cut off there. Hopefully it's gonna be a lot easier to tack on. I'm just gonna grab the stuff on the other side of the greenhouse there and tack that on. Okay, so it's a little bit loose for sure. Hopefully when I... Uh, Oh, I forgot to put on my little rubber bits, my little foam bits. I'll put those on now, see if I can squeeze them in there. Get, try to, I'll try to bunch this up as much as I can on the strapping. Maybe I'll put a piece on top if I can get it on there. But I don't think it's too tight here and a little bit loose over there, so. Let's see how it goes. So, let's... Uh, I feel like it's definitely looser on this side. 
Let's see, how did it go over here? Well, it's about the same. Okay, well, no real big improvements. I guess it didn't really matter which way I do it. But I guess I get to save a little more plastic doing it this way. Um, maybe if I put another strap on this upright, I might tighten it a little bit. Okay, it's, uh, it's all on there. I'm going to trim it, and then I'm going to see if I need to put another piece of strapping around here. Oh, i got to put strapping on the top first. We'll do a, do a strap on the top there. It looks real bad there. I think I need to put a strap on the front as well. So I'm going to trim it first on the inside and see how that goes, and then maybe I can get this pulled up onto the top strap, actually. Yeah, get it a little bit tighter. And then, uh, then I'll trim. I got the top piece of strap put on. The walls are here. They're crinkly, just like I imagined they would be. Not quite as tight as I'd like, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. All right, trimmed up. Not bad. I think it'll do the trick. You can kind of see the wrinkles in it better from this side, but uh, it's fairly tight. I think plastic's gonna blow around no matter what you do. Ventilation seems good, but the door is open, so I need to uh, need to get those doors on. So it's the next step. Two. We'll try thirty, I suppose. Up, so, it's on here on a hinge. Mommy, I can... Right. That will open. Oh, oh Jeannie, move it away, buddy. A little more space up here, but I think that's fine. We'll do it anyway. Three feet. It'll look normal, I think, once we get there. So three feet minus three inches, so I need 33 inch pieces. In case you haven't guessed, Dominic is putting the doors onto the greenhouse. So he's gonna make um, two piece doors for each one so that we can open them halfway. We're gonna have the chickens in them for the winter um, and into the spring. So we might want to open up the top part to allow for airflow, but have it closed so the chickens don't get out. Um, so he's gonna be building them three feet as the regular door and then another door up on uh, for the rest of it. <laughs> the full size of the door minus three feet. And possibly we can put a uh, screen in there later should we choose to so he is building them there and they're gonna be here and they'll be opening in opening in a waste space but uh, we get a lot of snow in the winter and we're gonna be using it in winter so you know it's gonna be hard to keep shoveled out in front right in the crosses well, I'm just, we got no, even the floor to shed if I went in there, that's so not square that I'm just as well doing it there, I think. No. Relatively square, hopefully. There, I put a square into it. That's square enough. Looks okay. Okay, so we got the one panel of one door done. So I'm gonna uh, wrap some plastic around it there now. And we can install that as we go. So, just gonna use up the scrap pieces, or the pieces that I cut off earlier. All right, so I'm gonna hang the first door, then I'm gonna make the second door and hang that. And hopefully still have time to uh, do the other side before trick-or-treating starts. 
good. We got the top half of the door ready here. So maybe we'll uh, just lay it in place first and see how how she fits. on the camera so far but <laughs> this particular upright ended up I don't know if the wood was twisted or uh, or if it just to line up with the wire but I think uh, no matter what I did that wouldn't really go straight for me which has caused some problems for the door obviously because the opening is a little bit wider in the bottom than it is up on the top right so I hung up the doors and they do close but not perfectly as you're gonna see now so the bottom one is all right not too bad and then the top one though uh, really leans down it's leaning down on this side so this edge of the door is lower than in by the hinge because of that tip on the wood so all I'm gonna do to fix that I'm gonna try to fix it is take out this hinge and there's actually quite a space here once I if I force it closed it's an I don't know probably can't hear me anymore but I can almost put my fingers out through it, so I think if I just put a little piece of uh, strapping here, attach it to the wall, and then put my hinge into the strapping, that'll pop the door out enough that it'll swing closed a lot better. Jenny's going to want to end this video. Uh, we got her all closed in for construction purposes. Everything's done. So uh, I think it worked out okay given my poor carpentry skill. And I did it all by myself. I don't think I got help with anything. So uh, just to show that, you know, it can be done with one person. Um, it's not perfect. Maybe we'll do another video about some of the things I don't know how they're going to work out. Uh, but it's not a permanent thing anyway, uh, so uh, pretty happy overall, and uh, everything else from this on is basically you would tune it to what you plan to do. So because we're putting chickens in here next, um, we'll be putting things like roosts in, putting in some barrels to hold heat, uh, we're going to put a compost ring in here for the winter, and then uh, take all that out in the spring and set our plants in here. So. We want it to be kind of a multi-purpose greenhouse, not just for growing. 
uh, but to uh, try to keep the compost going over winter. Hello, everybody here. Everybody here.